Last week, we were talking about how to make more money with your skills that you have now. Now, we want to talk about how to keep more money because that is the ultimate goal in life, right? Like, we're not just here making money. We're trying to figure out how to keep more of it. Um, so, I'm kind of going to start out at the very tippy top of this. And uh, this will record and we'll, we'll put it on if uh, you're not joining us. But if you have any questions, put it down below. Um, helps me out and I'll try to answer them. Uh, we're trying to do this every Monday at noon. Um, so anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy. Hopefully you get some value from this. So we're going to kind of talk about uh, the old Dave Ramsey method right out of the gate because I think he has really good methods for the beginner, you know, trying to reduce bad debts, um, different things you know, of Dave Ramsey's emergency funds, all them things are very valuable what he talks about. But I want to start out at the very tippy top of the way I see it and things that you need to track. I'm trying to keep this literally as simple as possible. Um, and so the very first step I want to talk about are income versus expenses. And I usually can ask people and they don't even know, like, what's your ratio? So it's like, that's how I explain it. And so the ratio would be, how much money do we make? Is it $1,000 a week? And what's our expenses? Maybe it's $500, whatever. So it'd be a 50% ratio. And we could say, um, but you can do the math for yourself. But figure out your ratio. Remember, anything that you track, you have a chance to improve. If you don't ever track it, you're never going to improve it. But I'm going to start out, that is the most simplest form. And I use that in my businesses, I use that in my life today. Just understand where your ratio is at. If you're overspending and you're constantly living at 105% of your, you know, your ratio is 105, well, maybe you need to start figuring out your expense side because you have a problem. You have an income problem. You need to make more money. Um, and same as in business, right? Like if we, if we can't cover our overhead, we either need to reduce overhead or we need to increase the income side. So, um, and I always tell people, you, your expenses only can go to zero, but your income can be infinite. So don't waste every coupon time. Your time is worth something. Spend all your time on the income side. Try to figure out a side hustle. Try to figure out how to make more money to reduce your income to expense ratio. So don't overthink on the expense side. Remember, you can only like live in a box and live on the streets and then make a check, right? Like, okay, we're living the perfect life, but we're still only making a thousand bucks a month. Still not enough. So keep it simple. And, and what I always tell people is like, just try to get to 80%. 80% is probably not really like even the ideal place you want to live, but 80% at least shows me that you can live on less than you make, which is the ultimate goal in life. So, um, and I don't even want you to like, don't even think about going to like this next step until you have accomplished step one. If you just got a pure income and expense rate, you know, you need to cut some expenses, maybe some unnecessary spending, or maybe make some more income. So make the call for yourself, but don't move to step two until you hit 80, 80 percent. Um, and then this is a little Dave Ramsey trick. There's 64 percent of Americans today cannot even make a thousand dollar like emergency expense like say your your car's brakes go out and it's a thousand bucks most 64 percent of americans can't even afford that that is painful and that number's rising right now at a crazy rate we'll probably be mid 70 percent maybe by the end of the year if things keep going in this recession the way they're going so um make sure to have an emergency fund and that Today is still $1,000, but I would say it's more like $1,500 because two years ago, uh, $1,000 isn't what it was what it is today. So um, so just get to $1,000 and put it in an emergency fund. Do not spend it. Do not just get it there, okay? Um, simple. Step three, I want you to try to place at least six months of of like whatever your expenses are. So if your expenses, like I'm going to use the thousand and five hundred to keep this super simple. If your expenses are five hundred dollars per month, and uh, you need to store six months of reserves, that's what I'm telling you to do in here. Step three: six months of reserves in a savings account. That's just in case you lose your job. That's just in case the rainy day comes. But let's get up five hundred dollars times six, three grand. 
Let's have the emergency fund and let's have the three grand in the savings account before we move to step four. And I don't, don't even want you to move to step four if you can't hit that step three um, because we need to get our expenses in check. We need to get the proper emergency fund dialed in and we need to have a reserve account just in case something happens to our income. That way you're playing the game correctly, the game of life. So, um, so if you can hit that, you can hit an 80% ratio. You could put $1,000 or $1,500 in emergency fund. You can also hold six months of your expenses in a savings account. Let's move to step four where it gets a little more fun. And it may take, try not to make it too long to get here because that's when it gets fun, right? So um, I always tell people, it's like, if you want to make more income or you want to invest in the best thing possible, and want to make the most money with that, like everybody's willing to do that. Um, I just say invest in yourself, right? The SB and me, Alex Hormozzi um, kind of talked about that. It's like the best investment you can make, whether it's a $50 online course, um, a mentor you pay a thousand bucks, these will always be your best investments for yourself. These have been the best investments for myself. This is why I've gotten to own uh, multiple companies that do over $25 million in revenue each year. This is why I have over a hundred units. This is why I have multiple storage facilities. It's like, I just followed, I just invested in myself, educated myself in an area called real estate on how to build net worth. Right. And I wanted to, um, but it all started with investing in books, courses, mentors, coaches. Um, and you have to understand that because if you don't understand um, investing in yourself. You don't trust anybody else. Just buy books, guys. Like, But implement the books. Invest in yourself through books, courses online, but implement them into your life. Don't just use them as a book because you want to get complacent. So um, always the best place to put money is yourself. And I don't even tell you to move to step five until you really figured out how you want to keep money. Now you're starting to, you, you've kept some money now. You got six months of reserves. If you increase your skills, your revenue is probably going to increase. So, and you may even have a side hustle now. You may be making a little more money than you're used to. Maybe you're doing something online. Um, and that's when I want you to move to step five, which is something I wish I knew in my 20s, maybe even my teens. Um, but it's, you know, you, this is the very step where you're starting to make a lot more money than your expenses. So you feel like don't live in the lifestyle inflation. And so what this is, is where you start, I need the home. I need the bigger home. I need the fancier car. Um, you know, Dave Ramsey says it well too. It's like, you don't have to pay for everything for cash. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that don't, everyone gets a bonus or they get whatever, but instantly they're spending it, right? Like we're just raising the bar. It's constantly, you raise the income, you raise the bar of life. You raise the income, you raise the bar of life. And some people are on that path trying to keep up with the Joneses. Do not live that path. It's a freaking trap. I'm telling you, you don't need a new car. Cars can go for four or five grand. I know they're reliable. You know, maybe the radio switch doesn't work. Whatever. It gets you from A to B. Um, but, Lifestyle inflation is a trap, and I think it started very early in high school or college when you're keeping up with other people's kids. Um, everyone's situation is different. Don't try to keep up. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Um, you just do you and understand your financials. The game is not about keeping up with other people. It's about understanding your expenses and your income. Um, and and don't, don't live in the trap. Um, but... Anyway, a little book that, uh, that I've read um, that changes many lives and in this step, this last step, basically just, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad changed a lot of lives. And, and, and why you will always hear this book come up in every podcast I've listened, listened to thousands of podcasts. Everyone will say, okay, because you understand how his rich dad thinks versus poor dad, right? Like the poor dad's buying the liabilities. He's buying the fancy car. He's buying the nice home. He's buying all the stuff. Buying a home is a trap. So was buying a car. Why is buying a home? Why, why would you want the, the American dream right now is to go to high school, go to college, get a degree, and get a fancy house or a big house and have a family and then live for 30 years and hopefully retire when you're 60. Well, 
in that book, you will learn that that is not the path that you want to live. You want to, when you're in your early teens, 20s, you want to start investing into things that make uh, go up in value. Um, and I always challenge everybody, think about what you invest in right now or what you own that actually goes up in value. And take out your house. Because a house is seen by the SEC or the government as a not an asset. And why? Because it has no chance of bringing in revenue. So you have to understand that a house is not the ultimate goal here. Most people think, oh, I don't want to rent anymore. I don't want to give anything away. Well, you know what? Maybe rent keeps your expenses lower so you can spend money on buying assets, real things, bigger things, not trying to buy into a 30-year mortgage which is just a handcuff, guys. You, that's where all your money's going to go. You've heard of people being house broke. You don't want to be one of them. That's why I tell most people, just rent. Don't even buy the thing. If you if your expenses are already a problem, like just follow the scheme I'm telling you. And, and you'll understand why it's a problem for most people, how they understand. And I, I do a podcast. Um, I do a newsletter as well on LinkedIn called Unfollow the Herd. And basically, it's to deviate from the normalcy of like, go to college, get a job, climb the corporate ladder, you know, hopefully retire one day. Um, I'm doing a different path, right? I'm an entrepreneur. Not everyone sees things the way I do, but I see a path where you can invest in your early 20s and be literally retired if that's how you want to be when you're 40, right? Like, it's just buy real estate and wait a little bit. 10, 10, 15 years can be a long time and you you will make more net worth in that amount of time than you will ever climbing the corporate ladder and trying to retire um, from 60 years old. I don't even know if I'm going to make it to 60. So you got to you gotta understand. But follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me that newsletter, guys. I am giving away tons of value of how I've done it. Um, I've done it just a little bit differently than most. Uh, I didn't have a rich uncle. I didn't have uh, rich parents. We just, we just did things. Uh, I just learned things from books, different ways. And I'm just trying to give you guys like the cheat sheet of like living life. And, and if you want to create a net worth and really be able to hold on to more money, which this is all about, um, follow me there. So, um, all right. So let's get back to it. So if I was in, let's go back to, um, how to keep more money. That's what this is all about. And, if I was in my teens or my early 20s, and here's what I would do, and then we're in the perfect economy for this right freaking now, is I would house hack. And now what house hacking would be is I would go find a house to buy. Um, right now, houses are easy to buy because the freaking mortgage rates are like 7%. Well, almost any seller right now does not want to drop their price, keep dropping their price. That's what they're doing. But maybe you come in as a teen or a early 20-year-old and you say, all right, hey, I'll give you, seller, I'll give you your price, but I, don't, I can't put any money down, so I need all the closing costs and all the down payment covered by you, the seller. Uh, because A, well, I, you don't have to tell them you don't have any money, but they probably already know that. But say you're willing to pay them the price. And then ask them, basically, by asking them for seller down payment, you're asking for a seller carry, a miniature seller carry. And guys, you can get into homes this way all the freaking time. You can buy apartments this way. You can buy anything this way. And this is the perfect opportunity to do it because when interest rates go to 7%, there ain't no more buyers, right? Like, the buyers are gone. But if you can figure out how to use that house to actually generate some revenue and reduce your cost of living, so your expenses again, now you've started unlocking some real potential. So if you find a house that's sitting on the market for 100 days right now and they keep reducing the price, go put in an offer if you think it has some merit for some rentability. Sit on that thing, move it into it for a year, rent out the other bedrooms to your buddies. You know, you can't do this with a family, but you can do this if you're teen, 20s. Yeah, do it. Let it rip. I What, what do you got to lose at this point? Um you know, usually, usually nothing. So it's like, I don't, don't, don't plan to listen to your parents. <laughs> you know, you want to listen to your parents because maybe they're paying your stuff, but you got to figure this out on your own. So this is the perfect time, perfect opportunity to do something like that. If you do a house hack, you live in it for a year, go do it again. All you have to do is live in it for a year, then boom, go find another house hack, do it again. 
and you want to just hold on to these assets, just keep renting out more of them. Try to hold on to them, right? Get them to cash flow. Um, I wish I would have known that in my teens and 20s. I just did not understand that. I didn't read the little purple book. Um, people need to understand that you got to be somewhat risk adverse for this, but these are simple calculations. I just, uh, I did a little reel on my TI-83+. plus. I mean, this is, we're talking simple things, right? The expenses of the house, we got a mortgage and we got, um, you know, utilities we got to cover. It's not hard things to figure out and uh, just figure out how much rent you need to make. Maybe it reduces your rent by half. Still, it's a win for you and you get an asset out of the deal. Um, and here's like the step number two. Like if I, okay, now I'm in my mid twenties, maybe I had a kid by now. It's a little harder, right? I can't house hack. My wife's like not like super pleased with like the basement rented out and like two more bedrooms. Right, Jen? Yeah, yeah right. And so, um, and, and so now I can like do the burr method. And so like now I can go and like buy the house and then I'm just going to rehab it, right? I'm going to rent it. I'm going to refinance and I'm going to repeat. So let's kind of walk through that. So again, just like the house hack, we're going to go buy, put in an offer, zero Guys, almost any deal you can do right now is zero down. And this is just, it's not hard. It's just what you can do right now. Go put an offer on a house that looks appealing, that it looks like it'll rent, it's in a decent area, and it just the seller can't figure and sell it. So it's it's happening a lot right now. Go in, you know, hopefully you found something that needs a little work. If you didn't, well, great. But if you can do a little work to it, bathrooms and kitchens, because that's what raises the appraisal value. Maybe do a little landscaping. Guys, 15 grand or something you could put into these. Again, keep your cash, buy the house with zero down. You don't have to buy anything down. Ask the seller, he needs to carry it all. And then it also has to make appraisal, right? So um, rehab it, upgrade this thing, then rent it out. You already done the calculations, right? So Figure out what you can rent it for. Maybe you got to live in it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just rent this one out completely. It's, uh, you know, two grand a month is what I need to rent it for. Make sure that's what the market will will tolerate. And people are renters right now because it's too unaffordable to buy. So you're under, you're, you're renting it. Now guess what? Since you put in 15 grand, you can refinance it. So this is where you reappraise the house. So say we throw in a little sweat equity, we put in 15 grand. Wow, we produced, maybe it's maybe it's 30 grand, maybe it's 35 grand. The appraisals don't care about the mortgage interest rate. They just care about the value within the house and what's surrounding it. So refinance that sucker and you probably get to pull out your 15 grand, maybe your 30 grand, maybe half of it, maybe some of it, maybe all of it, right? And that's the key. Now you can take that cash back out. Let's go find the next deal. Let's just keep doing that and stack up. Guys, you can do two of these a year. I know you can. Anyone can do this. You don't have to have a lot of construction background. Find a contractor buddy. Find some buddies that want to make some money with you. Partner with them on the deal. Um, and you can just build wealth through owning these assets. Now, if I would have done, you know, if you were to do two of these a year from age 20 to 25, I'm telling you what, you'd probably be like, you would be in no other game. You wouldn't even be working for anybody because you'd be like, wow, this freaking works. Um, and then, you know, maybe, maybe that doesn't fit your game, right? I'm just talking beginner steps here. Let's move into like kind of the, the third leg of this. And it's maybe you're busy. Maybe you went to college to get a doctor, uh, a doctor in something. Maybe you have a really good high paying W2 job. Well, you know what? Hey, there's people. Maybe you have a family already. Like you're you're 30 years old. I got three kids. I got a great job. I cannot do this. So is there options for you? Yes. Guys, you can invest in real estate in multiple ways. Now, I'm ta we were just talking about the two active ways to do it. Well, there's a passive way to invest in real estate. And you can invest in real estate just as a passive investor, basically where you get all the benefits, you know, cash flow, appreciation. You get depreciation, you get the, you know, refinance activities, which you got in like that Burr method. You get to, you get to participate in all those, but instead of you doing all the work, you rely on an operator. So this is what I do within my company called Mac Capital. And we are the operators and we use investor cash to perform and give the investor return on their cash. So 
We use this to do bigger projects though. We're not flipping houses with these guys. We're, we're doing larger apartment deals because as you will notice as you house hack or you burr method or whatever you do, you'll always go into a bigger property and, and you'll realize just the efficiencies, the scale of the efficiencies at these larger, like you'll just notice at 10 doors versus 24 doors in an apartment. It's just like, wow, there's so much more efficiency there. And now I don't have to be the manager. Wow, this is freaking awesome. I can, it'll actually support a manager. Well, you know, that's pretty clutch when you don't want to be an operator. And when you're used to being an operator and you get to hire out all the management duties, it's kind of like a relief. But if you want to be a passive investor, guys, there is an option for that. And it's called real estate syndication. You can Google it, you can read about it. And basically, it's much better than a REIT. Um, it's much better than investing in a stock dividend because you get all the benefits of real estate. And I always tell people, it's like, Google what the super wealthy invest in. Well, they invest in things called real estate. You're gonna find this theme over and over and over again. And why they do is because you get to actually write off an appreciating asset. Now, we talked about before, where do you, what do you own that actually goes up in value? I, I don't. I don't know anything other than my rentals, Jen, that go up in value. Do you do you own anything? Own Jen's like I own nothing that goes up in value. Jen's like a 25-year-old lives on her own. Nothing that goes up in value. And it's not her fault. It's like no one taught her that. It's not like her dad preached it to her when she was growing up, right? Like guys, this is just possible, but also if you don't have the time to do this, there is an option and that that why I wanted to do, why I went into business to help limited investors because that's, I was an operator always growing up. I learned the efficiencies in concrete work, the construction work. You have to thread the needle and you have to run efficient businesses. So I converted this to operating real estate deals and I used the abilities that I learned and educated myself in them to help passive investors learn about this. So this isn't a sales pitch. This is just these are the methods I would do. And if you don't have enough time and you have a good paying job, I would not go out and find a Burr style house to go flip because you're going to piss off your family. You're going to piss off, your, you know, you're not going to be able to spend any time with your kids. It's not about that, right? If you have the money, stay. If you're not an operator yet and you don't know anything about it, don't go be buying deals at this point in your life. If you, if you go and buy a deal and you don't spend the specific time you need on that asset, you may never do real estate again because you're probably going to go backwards on it. You're not going to do it in the timelines you need. You're not going to operate the deal as a pro would. And you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So don't do that. So it's just like, so anyway, I want to get through on how to keep more money. Um, and I'm going to go super deep into real estate and why this is, why the super rich invest into real estate. This is why I suggest that most people focus on real estate over the stock market, a 401k, dividends. Um, I'm going to go super deep next week on just real estate. So um, I hope all of this makes a little more sense on how to keep more money. Remember, we talked about at the beginning of this, 80% income, income ratio. So income versus expenses, you want an 80%. And then you want to make sure that you can... Um, have an emergency fund, about 1500 bucks. Figure out six months of your expenses and put it in a savings account. Then the next thing, invest in yourself. I can't tell you how important that is and spend time doing this. You will thank God you did and you will learn a lot along the way. And once you consume yourself into curiosity and knowledge into a space like investing or wherever you're going to teach yourself, maybe it's a skill. Maybe you want to open a hair shop. Well, learn from the best hair shops around. It's just there's people that have executed a lot of things out there in the world. Spend money and spend time on them to educate yourselves on those. So, um, But we moved all the way down into investing, how to keep more money, into house hacking, the Burr method. There's books on all of this. And uh, the little purple book is the one I recommend the most. You will understand through storytelling how, why a rich dad versus a poor dad and, um, you know, why you need to own assets in life and live off the liability or the, or the debt that these properties have on them. So 
Guys, I appreciate you guys so much. Follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on YouTube. I'm delivering as much information as I can there. I appreciate you all. I'll see you on the next live.